Praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is good, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, and we're looking forward to the things that he's going to do. All right, as we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word tells us over in the book of Psalm 150, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And then it says, praise ye the Lord. And on that, let us stand to our feet, lift up hands and praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Thank you. 
here. <laughs> Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Uh, and hopefully we got uh, several people online. I'm hoping that uh, Whitney Deal, I think she was online the other time. Hoping that uh, all of you are alive, okay? I hope all of you are online over there. So, uh, God is good. Be mindful of the Tuesday night Bible study. Bible study is Tuesday night at 7.30, and we are still in the book of Proverbs. Let's get all that we can from the Lord, okay? So let's do this for God. At this time, we're going to go ahead and receive the Sunday night uh, budget offering and tithe. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Use the mic, though. <laughs> if you don't mind, please. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Funny, man. Let's see who yeah, all is on here. So I wish I had a full head of hair. I don't. So 
and Sterling. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Before me, in other words, the way you walk in, 
is a perversion before the eyes of the Lord. And for a little while, a few minutes, I don't think this is going to be too long, unless the Lord directs otherwise, I want to speak on a title, Interference. Interference. Brother Glover, we will ask the Lord's blessing on this service. Lord, we thank you for this time and opportunity to hear from you, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, that you open up each and every heart, Lord, each and every ear, Lord, that we may receive your word. We ask you, Lord, to bless the pastor as he brings forth your word. Give him a first assumption of the Holy Ghost, Lord. We pray these prayers in your name, Jesus. Amen. A simple definition, an observation of the word interference is something or someone gets in the way and interrupts the progress of, uh, of something else is going one way. There's a origin and a destination of something. And when you try to get things done, we all prefer for nothing, anything, or anybody to get in our way. Especially with the planning time, we organ we're or organized. You know, it's one thing if you're sloppy, things and things change. You may say, "I show your shoulders." And, oh well, okay, just change the plans. But a, a lot of people are so organized, and everything's planned out, plotted out. And when they go, they do not expect interference. They do not expect an interruption. They don't expect anything, anyone, to get in their way. You think of it as of an electrical signal. If a transmitter sends out a radio signal, a radio wave, and it's trying to get to an antenna, it's trying to get to a radio, if it tries to get to your cell phone, when that signal is going in one direction, and it encounters interference, then that signal will not get to its destination. Its plans have been interrupted. There is interference. This man I went to you about, in the book of Numbers, his name was Balaam. And the king had told this uh, and requested of this man Balaam, come to come to me, because the Israelites had come out of Egypt, had come out of Egypt. They're marching through land and they're conquering lands and they're conquering people by the will of God, by the help of God. And the king wanted to interrupt their plans. He didn't want what happened to the other people to happen to him and his nation. And he knew about Balaam. Uh, some, uh, some people describe him as a diviner, some people a prophet, a uh, prophet of, of the false gods. And I, I have a vague understanding of what he was primarily for. But the king called him and said, if you will curse them, these people will not conquer me. He was, he was uh, sure of that. He was sure of that. And Balaam, when the messengers had come to him, he told him, go back, Take your money and tell the king, I'm not going to do it. The Lord has blessed them. He spoke to me. He has blessed them. He's not going to allow them to be cursed. No matter what I do, what I say, what your intentions are, king, forget it. So the king got word of it. He said the, uh, people that were, as the word of God says, that were more honorable, that were higher ranking, more important, important, higher standing in his kingdom. And they went back to him. Hey, 
I'm, I'm getting nervous about these people, these Israelites. I need you to come and curse them. I need you to come and curse them. And again, he told them, hey, you can't do that, but you know what? I'm going to go before the Lord. I'm going to go before the Lord and, and see what he says. And so Balaam went to the Lord. And the Lord said, okay, and this is where it kind of gets, uh, it, it gets confusing, admittedly, because the Lord tells him, go with them, just go with them, but what I tell you to say, you say that, you say that. And the following morning, he gets up, he gets on his donkey, saddles it up, and he starts going, but the, the word of the, uh, the Lord tells us that he was, that the Lord was mad that he got up and went. And as he went on the way, the angel of the Lord appeared, first of all, to the donkey, but Balaam could not see him. His eyes were not open. But the donkey's eyes were open. He could see the angel of the Lord had his weapon drawn, and he did this three times, and in each and every time, the donkey would turn out the way. The first time they were on the road, there was an open field. He went through the field. The donkey went through the field. And Balaam, not being able to see the angel of the Lord, got mad with the donkey. And he started striking him and hitting him. He was mad at the donkey. And then they found themselves in another path. They found themselves in another path. And it seems like each time the donkey turned, the path was getting narrower and narrower. And the last meeting, the third time, it says that uh, when the angel appeared, the donkey could not turn to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. But he still tried to. That donkey had life on his mind. That donkey wanted to live. That donkey wanted to live. But because they were closed in, he did it in such a way that he went up against a wall and crushed Balaam's foot. And for the, for the third time, the man started beating the donkey. There was an interruption. There was interference. There was interference. He's got his mindset on getting whatever reward the king had for him, and he can't see no otherwise. He can't see nothing else. And the donkey tries to avoid getting cut down and crushes the foot of Balaam. And for the third time, Balaam starts beating him. But the angel of the Lord opened up the mouth of the donkey. And so very eloquently said, why are you beating me? Why are you beating me? Polly had an Oxford a accent, perfect grammar, <laughs> and started speaking to this man who was so mad, so angry, that he started beating a donkey. And when the donkey started talking to him, he starts having a conversation with him. <laughs> and how many times does that happen? The serpent talks and the woman has a conversation with the serpent, here the donkey's talking, the man's having a conversation <laughs> with the donkey. And that kind of gives it maybe somewhat of a view on what God was trying to do because God told him to go, but he, but God got mad that he went. But a lot of times to interfere with people's plans and what they're doing, God has to let you do things. God has to let you do things because he's trying to get a, a point across. And we already know that God has revealed that whatever was going through Balaam's mind was perverse in God's mind and in God's heart. He told him so. So what you're doing is perverse in my eyes. And sometimes it takes, it takes, uh, Making what we think is a dumb animal say smarter things than we. Sometimes it takes something that is so below us, so under us. You know, God shows the foolish things. 
He shows things that weren't even made to confound us, to make us understand and to see that a lot of, to make us see that a lot of the things that he's trying to get across, maybe, maybe will open our eyes, will open up our heart to what he's trying to do, to what he's trying to direct us. And God gets involved in a lot of things. God gets involved in a lot of things that uh, he's trying to interfere. And, I'm, and, and before I, I, I keep going on, I know I'm going to mention things that people will might say, I'm doing that, I'm doing what he's talking about, but it may, it may not apply, it doesn't apply to everything. It's two, two different people might be doing the same thing, but God wants them to either stop it, and once the other one, other person to keep on going. So if I say something and, and, and you're doing it, it doesn't mean it's, I'm, I'm talking about you. I'm just talking about interference in general. If God's trying to get your attention, he, he may send someone or something, a circumstance, to interfere with our plans. To interfere with our plans. Jesus was that kind of interference. Jesus was that kind of interference. Death, rain, sin. Rain in people's lives. The grave rain in people's lives. And he was sent to uh, be that interference. Mm -hmm. These things are very powerful. Yes. They're permanent. Mm -hmm. Sin is permanent. Just talk to anybody. Question yourself. What do you what do people what do people think about sin? They're always placing sin at such a high tier that nobody can conquer it. Very true. So why in the world, it being uncomfortable, let's label it that, if, if sin is uncomfortable, iniquity is uncomfortable, the grave is uncomfortable, uh, death is uncomfortable, why in the world would God send Jesus to conquer it? And then we walk around saying, well, we got to live in sin. We got to do that. Well, preacher, why don't you say that about death? Why don't you say it? I mean, if you, if you have the confidence that God can conquer sin in your life. Why don't you say that about death? Oh, even Christians still die. Yeah, but we're going to be resurrected too. Amen. 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 You know, six feet of dirt. Well, being brought to a crisp, if, if we get, if we get a... Cremated. Cremated, that's the word. That is not... Uh, that's not an inference to God. Do we want to live forever? Mm -hmm. How do these those words we constantly come out of our mouths? And yet, God, you conquer it. I, if you tell me, I, if you command it, that means if I don't have the power, then you give, give the power for me to do it. And it is scary. It, it can be intimidating and scary. That's another interference. Fear. When somebody, when somebody asks you, well, what do you believe? Uh, what does the Bible say? I mean, some, it's getting to where they don't even ask what the Bible says. And it's like, well, what do you believe about that? Mm -hmm. And you tell them what the Bible says, and, and we can get that, that fear, that fear of looking stupid in front of people, that fear of not being uh, able to say it well enough to uh, where people understand it. And the people already read a lot of times. It's very few people that I encounter now where they really want to know. Some people are just it, kind of like like the Jews when they came to Jesus. Just tell us plainly, as if oh, if you tell me if you tell me you're, you are the Christ, I'm going to believe you. They come with that attitude outside, but on the inside is I want you to say it so I have a reason to stone you. And it seems like that's what people are going for nowadays. It's like well, just tell me what the Bible says, and you tell them it's like you're crazy. You really think God has the power over that? Yes, yes. I really do believe God has the power. And if, I, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, then there's, there's still, I, that's a long philosophical talk right there. The, the way people think is, mm -hmm. I get to get a long philosophical talk about even if they think one way or the other, that they're still wrong. Mm -hmm. They're still wrong. Because God, if you look at things objectively, Amen. if he the things we could just accomplish, if we could just accept God's interference. You know, there's a penalty 
and the NFL called pass interference. For those big big in America, we'll kind of know what, even if you're not in sports, you kind of know what that is. You do know what uh, the quarterback was a pass to a receiver that's downfield. And there's a defender running along. There's two people in two different uniforms because they're in di a different teams. So one's trying to catch the ball, go one way. The other one's either trying to keep it from catching the ball or intercept the ball to run it, if he can, to the other way. They got, they're in the same game, but trying to accomplish two different things. And pass interference is when the ball is thrown to one, and either or can commit this penalty, is that they can only do so much to stop the other man from catching that ball. If you hit him or touch him in certain kind of ways, you can be penalized because you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to, they have as much right, yes, you're supposed to stop them, but there's rules on how you stop them. And if you go against that and you get penalized, that is called pass interference. In the history of man, in the history of man, there is one person that has been penalized so many times for inference. Mm -hmm. And that is the man called Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. He's been penalized so many times. He's trying to get people's attention. He's trying to interrupt Amen. our plans. It is. He's trying to get it away from going one way. Not because he doesn't want us to win. It's because just like Balaam, you perverse in my eyes. You're going the wrong way. Amen. Yes. Yes. And even religious people. It's like, like uh, it, uh, symbolically, people walking around with that yellow flag and the whistle. When, when Jesus comes around, <laughs> Jesus comes around, they constantly blow the whistle. It's those who have my flag, Jesus. Yeah. Those who have my flag, Holy Ghost. What are you doing, Father? I'm, I'm in church. I'm in the choir. I'm doing this, that. I'm involved in the church. But we still uh, throw that leg. <laughs> you know, football and hockey were the same sport, man. They put Jesus in, in the penalty box. And he'd spend a lot of time there because he's constantly interfering. And again, if you're doing something that you feel guilty about, hey, hey, check it again. Now, Probably not doing anything against God. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that if God interrupts us, no matter which direction we're going, if God interrupts us, let's put away the penalty flag. Let's put away the whistle. Yes. And let's just follow God. Amen. 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 And on the upside side of that, Satan is the least penalized. <laughs> for interference. Because mm -hmm. he will accommodate us. He is, he is an accommodating dude. And these movies, the way they make them out to, to be, like this creepy, in the dark, jump scared kind of dude, is all the time doing uh, wicked things, you know, like old lady floating, floating across the floor in a real dark bedroom or auntie house. <laughs> or, or dogs, dogs walking down the hallway with red eyes. He's more sophisticated than that because humans, <laughs> kind of like the donkey calling, the uh, talking to Baal. You know, we are human beings can be the Baal, and God will let us go so far. God let us go so far trying to, and we get angry at each and every interruption and interference that God gets on the way until finally he says, God says, I'm going to let that stupid animal talk to them. Maybe that will get their attention. Mm -hmm. And we end up talking to a donkey and <laughs> many times, <laughs> and many times, even that doesn't work. <laughs> even that doesn't work because we can so high and mighty, so learned, so sophisticated, so intellectual and analytical that, that we just don't listen. We just don't listen. Brothers and sisters, it's not an insult. It's, it's not, I know I tend to be very serious, but, you know, going back to that shout them happy pastor you said, is like, well, what's so hard about being happy? Why, why, why do I have to, you know, why do I have to do the world's way to be happy? A lot of times I, I decide.
side, you know, sometimes when I get, uh, like at work, for example, if I get aggravated, you know what? I can even sense like heart rates, muscles tensing up, anxiety moving up. <laughs> you know what? Once you name a few things, you're mad about nothing, 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 nothing. So why are you getting? I got, I got to check myself. Why are you getting anxious? Because I did it so very long. It's like you, ha I have no reason to. I have no reason to. I don't, ha I don't have to go to therapy. I don't have to watch Doctor So and So on TV to solve my problems. Life is hard, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a good thing. Perhaps you said something about. It. You know, it's hard to be happy, it's hard to be, it's hard to be sad or something like that this morning. Uh, hard it's to win, hard to lose. Hard to win, hard to lose. Yeah, like that. It's, it's hard either way. It's hard either way. And that's how, it, what I think about my job is people want to make you happy. They want to do things that they, that they love in, <coughs> in life. And e even the boss, good bosses, they try to accommodate you in one night. Say, you know what, hey, I don't love my job. You don't have to make it. If it's hard, it's hard. I want to be compensated pro uh, appropriately for it. Of course, man. Absolutely. But I don't have to be. I don't have to be happy with my job. I don't have to love it. I, the principles of the Christian are different. At least mine are. If you pay me, if you pay me uh, for my time and my talents and my skills, you give me the money. I'll give you my time, my talent, and my skills. Don't Amen. worry about my the, my joy and my home life. Don't worry Amen. about that. Right. Amen. You know. It, right. it, <laughs> Amen. It's just one way to look at that. It's my principles are different. If I'm if I come to work happy or not, don't worry about it. You pay me to do something, I'm going to do it. I might even increase it. I might even do stuff that uh, that I'm not going to be compensated for. Mm -hmm. Life is hard. Sometimes we get, we get confused and we start going the wrong way. God interrupts. Let me tell you. Maybe you've been afraid of starting your own business. You see interrupting things. It's like, you need to start that to help you. Mm -hmm. Some people will be the other direction. Quit that job. Got something better. Stay away from those people. Stay away from that woman. Stay away from that man. Stay away from that area. Oh, I need you to go to this type of stuff. Because I need you to apply for such and such a job. I need you to work from home. Interruptions, interference. Don't penalize Jesus. Do not penalize Jesus. I'm going to ask you now to bow your heads and close your eyes and contemplate the word of the Lord. Is the Lord causing interference in your life? Does he want you to bring it back a few notches? Or does he want you to bring it up? Does he want you to change what you think about him? He is the Almighty. If he says something, the Bible says something about him, then it is true. And it is true. And true friends, as the pastor comes for the closing portion of the church service, do not penalize the Lord. He is all knowing. He is kind. He is long suffering. Okay, Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him for a moment. Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for your mercy and your grace. We understand with clarity of the message to just let you have your way. That you just freely walk through our lives and let us follow you knowing that the interference is to keep us in the ways of God and in the blessings of the Lord. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for all the things that you are doing and all the things that you are going to be working on with us throughout the week, knowing that you are moving, though we cannot see you. We know that you are moving. We praise you, dear Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, let us stand to our feet and give the Lord a round of applause.
on it and uh, let's go after see how many just see how many uh, phone numbers you can get that's the key handing out a card is one thing handing out a card is one thing but it's different when you're able to say hey can I get your phone number that way you can follow up on them okay we can just line it up let's plan it out here's the plan they say they're coming out Sunday go ahead and get their phone number run with that plan right you get into a fight you gotta come with a plan right I remember I fought this big old dude this dude was this, this big old dude and um, I had a plan <laughs> I knew how I was going to fight. I was going to just swing with my right and keep coming. Left hand out, right hand cocked back, keep coming straight to him. And he didn't know what to do. Kept ducking every time because I had a plan. I was skinny too. Dude fell over. Boom. Because he didn't have a Now that's a big dude. I remember walking through the neighborhood though, man. When I saw him, yeah, I'm like, good God, he's a big dude. But he didn't mess with me. <laughs> it's huge, boy. But anyway, go with a plan, all right? Plan your week out. See how that works for you. Go with the list. Go with the plan. Go with the list before you leave out the house, okay? Plan your week when you go home. You can have a wonderful night tonight. Plan your week. Talk to somebody about God. Here's the plan. They say they come now Sunday. Hey, let me get your phone number, man. I want to I stay connected. Are you cool with that? Yeah, I'm cool with it. And call them. You got my number too. They will come out to church. Here's the thing. Get used to doing that. We get used to doing that. Man, God will build his work. I'm telling you, God will build his work. If we get used to it, it's not a, it's, it's not a, I'm gonna get out of here. It's not a comfort zone at first. Don't expect it to be comfortable. And nothing starts off comfortable, y'all. Nothing starts off comfortable. But things become comfortable after a while, right? And, and, uh, and so I'm about to run out. So start it out. Let's invite someone out to church and get the phone number. Expand the family. You never know who you're going to meet anyway. It could wind up being your best friend. You could wind up meeting your best friend. You could wind up meeting the guy who's going to come to your funeral and cry. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. So, uh, so let's expand the family. Let's dismiss in prayer. Brother Adam, if you don't mind, dismiss me. Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for the words that came uh, forth, oh God. Father God, teaching us, oh God, not to throw the pen in the glass, oh God, when we try to be free, but let you have your way and let you be God in our life, oh God. Father God, as a man of God, say, help us to plan our week, help us to, Father God, help us to talk to people we need to speak to, oh God, that needs to come to church, oh God. Help us just to be that light, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. May God bless you real good.